13.3, five and a half rebounds. Look for her to be a big part of today. Someone who was less involved was Madison Layden. Madison Layden averaging 15.3 for the Boilermakers, adding six and a half rebounds. Was a little bit quieter in that game. Definitely the Boilermakers looking to get her involved. Abby Ellis tosses out to Layden, Layden into the paint. Kyle into the corner, bounces off a of Boilermaker. Abby Ellis will take it at the baseline for the first inbound of the game. Abby Ellis, the junior guard from Melbourne, Australia, transferred from Cal Poly. She's the first Aussie in Boilermaker history. Layden with a mid-range jumper, gets it for two. First points of the night belong to Madison Layden. Madison Layden, as we mentioned, some of the Boilermakers want to get going early. Tends to be a tone setter for the team. Strong dive into the lane. Easy two for Marshall, ties it up. Lorelei Roper very strong on that finish inside. That's gonna be a major key to beating this Boilermaker squad for the herd today. Rashea Kyle on the wing. Layden passes out to Kyle. Get a whistle blow. Marshall foul. First foul of the night belongs to Savannah Wheeler for the Marshall Thundering Herd. Cass Harden will inbound for the Boilermakers. Cass Harden, the senior guard from Bakersville, Indiana. Rashea Kyle near the low post looking for the... Put back, no good for Janae Terry. Marshall foul number 24, Kennedy Tobal, her first, second. Janae Terry going to the line. So far on the season, three for five. Definitely looking to improve those numbers. Free throw shooting as a whole for the Boilermakers so far this season, only shooting at 71.4%. Nothing but net on that first attempt from Janae Terry. Terry, a transfer from Illinois, the junior guard. Hometown of Detroit, Michigan. Averaging 22 a game. Sinks both of those. Boilermakers start off perfect with a one possession lead over the Thundering Herd. Aliyah Dunham. Kia Civil's being doubled now hard in the backcourt by the Boilermakers. Quick toss to 24, Colclaw. Mid range jumper sinks it is Lorelei Roper. Lorelai Roper, way to show that she's more than a post player here. Already has a basket inside and from the free throw line. Abby Ellis drove into the lane, tried to get Kyle off the hands of the Boilermaker. First substitution of the night, Jayla Smith, the freshman from Indianapolis, checking in for Abby Ellis. Jayla Smith, an incredibly wonderful new weapon for this Boilermaker squad, averaging 17 minutes a game through these first four games. And she's first on the team with seven steals. Janae Terry passed out to Kyle. Easy post up. Yeah, and when it comes to Jayla Smith, it, with those numbers, it's easy to understand why she was Indiana's Miss Basketball. Physical bump from Layden. Thundering Herd lose the ball. Jayla Smith pass to Layden. Layden from three. Too strong. Rebound by Terry. Cass Harden passes out to Layden. She'll relay the offense, set up a play here. Rashea Kyle coming up to set the screen. Quick pass out to Terry, shot clock at five. Kyle's gonna post it up. Good for two off the bank. Rashea Kyle has really demonstrated so far this season a plethora of post moves and she's gonna be a major key for this Boilermaker squad going forward. Savannah Wheeler on the wing. This Boilermaker defense staying strong outside the arc. Wheeler from the corner, rim and out. Pass out to Colclaw, in to Lorelai. She knocks it down for two. For Mora, from, a, from a Purdue perspective. Absolutely, the Boilermakers really trying to take advantage of not only her scoring, but her ability to facilitate scoring. Boilermakers trying to move the ball inside, try to get quick kickouts and cuts. Jayla Smith near the baseline. Pass out to Terry, Terry from deep. 
Bounce out to the rim. Savannah Wheeler on the run here. She's gonna take a stop and reset outside the arc. Boilermakers not shooting the three ball well today, but that's uncharacteristic for their season. Shooting as a team 36% from outside. Cole Cloud with the mid range, too weak. Kyle with the rebound, but a foul is called. I've I believe it's on Kia Sibbles of Marshall Thundering Herd. I don't believe that's going to be a foul. I think they're going to say, oh, it appears to be a foul. It's going to be Herd ball. Aliyah Dunham to inbound near the baseline. Fumbles the ball a little bit, regains it. Savannah Wheeler driving into the paint. Travel is called. Boilermakers will take over. I know it's early in the game, Alex, but having two turnovers at this stage in the game, perhaps not what the herd are looking to have on their side. You're absolutely right, Charlie. The Thundering Herd lead each game in turnover margin by 11 as Cassidy Harden takes a shot, no good. As I was saying, the Thunder doing a great job uh, of forcing those turnovers, but here the Boilermakers kind of have the advantage so far. Layden with the rebound. They'll award her the ball. And I think it's safe to say Kia Sibbles can't believe her eyes on that one. Her first team third. Janae Terry to inbound. Second for the Thundering Bird. Three, Cece Mays, 23, Alexis Johnson, and 33, Brianna. Multiple Brianna. substitutions coming in for the Thundering Herd. We've got Alexis Johnson, number 23, number three, Cece Mays. And I believe number 30, Ariana Redmond. You would be correct there, Alex. And one of the key substitutions here, CC Mays. CC Mays has not started in a single game, yet averages about 21 minutes a game and 14 points in that time to complement 6.7 rebounds. We also just got done talking about turnovers. She leads the team with seven. Madison Layden fighting into the paint will put it up. It's a little too strong off the bank. Jayla Smith with the rebound, too strong. Kyle with the putback for two. Rashea Kyle will not be denied at the rim. Rashea Kyle is the equivalent to what Zach Eady is for the men's basketball team here at Purdue. She's the dominant force uh, towering over all opponents inside the paint. Just an absolute wonderful weapon to have. That one off the hands of the Thundering Herd off a bad pass. Boilermakers will take it in the other direction. Rashea Kyle also very efficient scoring inside. 65% from, uh, from the field. Layden setting up her offense. Pass into Terry. Terry driving down the lane. Some fancy dribbling, passing out to Jayla Smith. Terry looking for the shot. Shot clock under 10. And Marshall will get the ball. That one off the hands of Terry. And the Thundering Herd happy to win back that possession down by four. Marshall's been unable to string anything together so far. Nice to have a set piece here for them as they're trying to get out of a two minute and 19 second scoring drought. Quick inbound to Dunham. Boilermakers not quick to retreat. Jayla Smith going with her woman all the way back down the backcourt. Lorelai Roper at the top of the key. Hand off to Dunham. Dunham with the mid-range. Nothing but net. Really nice pull-up shot there from Dunham. We've seen Marshall get a couple looks, but it's been hard to find with the Boilermaker defense being so physical right inside the arc. And the Marshall Thundering Herd coming right back out with some tough defense now. Jayla Smith passes off to Layden at the top of the arc. Shot clock at seven. Layden trying to make something happen. We'll pass it into Kyle. Tip by the Thundering Herd, turnover. Dunham with the ball. 
Stops at the top of the key. No look. Rebound by Layden after a no good shot from Brianna Furby. Cass Harden from the corner. Sinks it! Cass Harden starting the three point scoring today for the Boilermakers. The Boilermakers trying to make that more a part of their game, averaging about not, just under 19 per game so far, attempted. The Boilermakers had 27 three points fall into the net in the first three games of play. That's the most in program history. They, and especially with Cass Harden, when she gets hot, she can really knock them down. Cass Harden has the ability to impact the outcome of a game when she's able to get those shots to fall. And being a senior, she's really a, a, a leader on this team. And when it doesn't even matter if she's hot or not. As long as she's out there on the court, she provides that confident presence that the Boilermakers need to have in order to be successful. Absolutely. And in addition to that, the defense has to account for it at all times, something that's very valuable in trying to create space. Dunham with the mid-range. Way overshot on that one. Harden at the top of the key. Kyle sets a pick. Looking for Layden. Madison Layden really taking her time to set up this offense. Janae Terry sets up a three. Terry with the no look. Kyle with the putback. Rashea Kyle taking, wasting no time to get involved here today. Eight points already to complement three rebounds. Dunham taking it herself, trying to find something near the baseline. Will pass out to Lorelai. Pass into the paint is unsuccessful from Alexis Johnson. Janae Terry. Miscue on that pass goes out of bounds. I believe that was off Cass Harden, but number 33, Brianna Furby, appears to be making her case. It is Marshall Ball. Did go off the hands of Harden. A couple substitutions coming in for both teams. Ava Learn, Ricky Waltman, and Brooke Moore for the Boilermakers, and I'll let you know the Marshall substitutes as soon as I can identify them. And Brianna Furby should perhaps become a lawyer after giving a, a brilliant presentation there, able to turn the call over. Cole Claw trying to make something happen near the elbow. Foul called on Waltman. Her first foul in the team's first. A rare foul from Waltman, has six over the first four contests. Easy bank shot for Furby. Abby Ellis calling out the play from the wing. Beautiful cross move. Trying to pass it back outside. Ava Learn dumps it off to Abby Ellis once again. Ricky Waltman with the bank. A beautiful pass from Abby Ellis. She drove all the way down the alley and a quick bounce pass for the easy two. My goodness, Abby Ellis really demonstrating the playmaking ability there. Savannah Wheeler tried to take it herself, got tripped up and we got a whistle blown. I believe it a charge call on Cassidy Harden. Mide Oriami coming in for the Boilermakers now as Cass Harden will take to the bench after taking a nasty spill onto the court. CeCe Mays also enters for Brianna Furby. Savannah Wheeler knocks down that first free throw for the Thundering Herd, their first of the night, finally reaching double digits here with 29 seconds left in the first quarter. Two for two is Savannah Wheeler. She's an 87% free throw shooter, so it's no surprise. A lot of excellent free throw shooting on this thundering herd team. As a group shooting, 78.8% from the charity strike. Brooke Moore at the top of the key. 
Puts it up too strong off the heel of the rim. Kia Sivils setting up the play. Eight seconds left on the clock in this first quarter. And with a buzzer shot, Sarah Limmer. You weren't seeing so much against Dayton the other night. CeCe Mays driving down the lane, puts up a right hook and knocks it in. An old rim and in for CeCe Mays. CeCe Mays, as earlier mentioned, really great off the bench. I think the most impressive thing, she shoots 61.5% from the field. Brooke Moore trying to set up a play here. Taking it in herself, launches it up with her right hand. I thought that one was gonna go in, but it did not. Ricky Waltman unable to put that one back. Uh, Brooke Moore was about five feet from the low post mark, but she still threw that one up with pure confidence. And that's what she does. She's a, a, an absolute great shooter. She can absolutely uh, get you into this game if she gets hot. 100% there, and a, a little bit of a lapse in judgment by Ricky Waltman for that turnover. Just forgot to put the ball to the floor before moving. And I gotta tell you, Alex, I really like the uh, the jersey combinations we have here on the court today. The classic gold for the Boilermakers and the Kelly Green for the Marshall Thundering Herd. Similar to, to the Notre Dame Kelly Green, if you ask me, but uh, a few little changes with the black stripe down the side. A classy look for sure. And interestingly there, a second traveling violation in under a minute. Ellis in the corner. Pass to Mide, back to Ellis from the corner. Nothing but net from Abby Ellis. Abby Ellis, per usual, amazing from beyond the arc. CeCe Mays almost loses that one, doubled near the backcourt. Quick pass into Civils. They'll reset the offense after a little bit of confusion. CeCe Mays now working into the lane. A lot of collision there, and Abby Ellis takes the charge. And that's one that Coach is gonna give you a Gatorade for. That was well-earned charge there as CC Mays ran right through. That was absolutely ghastly. Abby Ellis just took that on the chin. CC Mays unsuccessful in laying that one up. But she's right back at it, orchestrating the offense on the Boilermakers end. Laid in at the top of the key. Waltman from the wing thought about taking the shot. Something the Boilermakers trying to emphasize in their offense this year under Coach Geralds in her first season, trying to dribble the ball as little as possible. Mide Oriami, ribbon in for three. Deep into the shot clock were the Boilermakers, but Mide walks away with three. Mide Oriami, her first three of the year. Savannah Wheeler from the high post, no good. Interesting lineup choice here for the Boilermakers. You've got Abby Ellis leading at point. Ava Learn, the freshman, Madison Layden, and Ricky Waltman occupying those big men spots. This is more of the, the team two kind of offense running here for the Boilermakers, but yet they're seeming to pull away from the Thundering Herd here early on in this second quarter. Definitely something that Coach Geralds is looking for trying to see what group of players are going to work the best together during this non-conference stage. Free throw shooting from Wheeler that you just saw there as she sank both. Very, very good. 23 attempts this year. Well, now 25, making 22. Kia Civils post that one up. No good but the putback from Adriana Redman off the bank shot. Boilermakers had a nasty tur turnover inside the paint and the, and the Thundering Herd capitalized. 
Redmond really making the most of her minutes. So far this season, only averaging about nine minutes per game, still managing to put up about three points and two rebounds every contest. Layden pass out to Smith on the wing. Shot clock at five. Abby Ellis needs to make something happen. She'll shoot it from deep. Sinks it! Ellis from downtown. All the way from the southern hemisphere there. My goodness. Coming from down under, she can shoot from downtown. That's a fantastic line. <laughs> Rashea Kyle re-entering the game for the Boilermakers along with Janae Terry. Mide Oriami will take to the bench. You know, Alex, I think for the Boilermakers, getting a basket on this possession is going to be huge. I feel like the difference in having a 10-point a, a lead and an 8-point lead is a lot mentally for the opponent. Bad pass from Abby Ellis results in a turnover. Savannah Wheeler going to take it here. She's slow to start. Bounce pass to Colclaw. Too strong of a jumper was Redman. Jayla Smith pass out to Ellis from deep again, and she'll get an air ball. Checking in for Marshall, number 34, Lorelai Roper re-entering the game. Cole Claw to inbound at the baseline. Into Dunham. Savannah Wheeler driving. Pass out to Civils. Bounce pass. No good. Too strong. Savannah Wheeler will take it at the top of the arc now. Shot clock at 10. Colclaw driving down the lane. Quick pass out to Wheeler. Wheeler from three. Off the backboard. Unsuccessful are the Marshall Thundering Herd. And going to the line here is Roper, as you saw just clipped there by Kyle. Roper so far this season, 50% from the line. This is only her fifth trip. Well, shot number five and six. And you know, sometimes that's going to happen. Rashea Kyle standing at Check my notes here, 6'6", six, six, uh, extremely tall, tallest in the paint, if not on the floor total. You're gonna get those calls just for being big. It's not something you can control. It's just uh, it's just something you need to work on and, and grow into your size. Zach Eady, as a freshman for the men's team, definitely got a lot of calls just for being tall, and he's since worked on that. Interestingly, both, uh, both Kyle and Eady, the tallest players, in the Big Ten. Janae Terry knocks down a mid-range jumper. Boilermakers take an eight-point lead. Double-teaming the herd in their own backcourt now. Interesting strategy, kind of forcing them. We'll get a bump and a whistle. Uh, my goodness, Alex, I believe that's going to be an over-the-back call. I'm not so sure about that one. And we're going to take another look at it here. She was double teamed by Abby Ellis. Uh, you see, I can see right there, her right foot kind of went over and touched the line. The ball didn't, but the same rules with football. You put a, full, a foot out of bounds and that stops no matter where the ball is. Janae Terry with an open look off the rim. Layden with the rebound, fighting for it. And the Marshall Thundering Herd come up with it, Dunham. Dunham fighting into the lane, gonna pass back outside the key. Shot from Wheeler, off the rim. Jayla Smith takes an open look. Off the heel, too strong. Pass back out to Ellis. Jayla Smith, another three, but a whistle was blown. Timeout on the floor. Timeout called on the floor. Boilermakers with an eight point lead will be back shortly on Big Ten Plus. Compliment those nine points, three assists. I love the way that Abby Ellis plays. She's 5'6", so she's really always the shortest person on the court, but she plays like she's 7'5". The confidence of this young lady is just unmatched on this Boilermaker squad. 
and that's probably why she got the start being her first season with the Boilermakers at running point. Absolutely. A lot of heart in her from the way she plays. Jumper good from Furby. Cuts the lead to six. Layden on the wing. Dribbles into the elbow. Pass out to Terry. Layden from the jumper. No good. Ellis with, Ellis, excuse me, with the attempted rebound. Unsuccessful. Cole Claw will inbound for the Thundering Herd. Ellis never afraid to get in there and get in the mix. Dunham on a quick run here. Savannah Wheeler with an open look for three. Too strong. And with that one catching the back iron, that furthers this Marshall three-point drought. 0 oh and 8 so far. Goni at the low post, passes it off to Ellis. Goni from the elbow. That'll spin off the rim. Three minutes left in this first half. That one in and out of the rim from Furby. As I was saying, three minutes left in this first half. Boilermakers lead by six, but Marshall knocking on the door at all times. They're 0 for 7, excuse me, 0 for 4 on their last four attempts from field goals, but the way that they're shooting, they have no fear. And that's one thing that coach Tony Kemper says about his team is they always make sure to no fear when they shoot the ball. They will take any challenge, no matter how hot or cold they are. And that last one proves it. An easy lay in from Savannah Wheeler cuts the lead to four. And on that last drive, Cole Claw had a really nice take. Harden, spotter three. And today we've been talking about Harden, you know, getting hot. And there's the first of them for her. My apologies, that being her Timeout. second three. Timeout on the floor after a bank shot from Cole Claw. Boilermakers. She's not playing around on defense so far this season, allowing only 55 points to their opponents while scoring on an average of 80. Boilermakers need to rack up the points if they want to be successful in this one. Cass Harden pass. Flip the court, Terry, too weak. She'll get her own rebound. And some hands reaching in. Foul be called. Kemper obviously frustrated after the Kia Sybil's foul there. Plus, not the getting the rebound. You can see he was a little bit frustrated. Janae Terry, 60% from the line this season. No good on that first one. That'll be the first miss of the day. Boilermakers two for three from the line. Fun fact about those two for three free throws, they're all by Terry. One of two is Janae Terry. Thundering Herd setting up their offense. Dunham in the corner trying to fight around Rashea Kyle and Abby Ellis. Some contact made, we'll get a whistle and Abby Ellis looks like a little frustration as she knows that she made some contact. Madison Layden gonna take to the bench as Jayla Smith checks in for the Boilermakers. Excuse me, it was Rochea Kyle who got the contact. But Ellis, being the leader of the offense, shows the frustration for her teammate. Aliyah Dunham also appeared to be a little, a little irritated by the contact. Tensions may be running high as this game is closer than you may notice. Six point margin right now. Well, anyone who tells you they don't like physical defense is just lying. But also, I can see where the tension kind of builds. You're down in this game by six, trying to fight your way back in it. And physical defense is just not the thing that's gonna get you back in it. Savannah Wheeler being double teamed, she'll get a travel call from some strong boiler defense as we're just talking about the thundering herd 
facing some tough defensive matchups. And great by Katie Geralds to double team these players outside the paint, making the tough offense hard to find to even set up a play. Wheeler was averaging two turnovers per game, perhaps part of the reason why the Boilermakers were so confident in going in on that trap, knowing they could force another. Cass Harden instructing Jayla Smith to get open. She'll take it at the top of the arc. Shot clock at seven. Janae Terry taking it down the lane. She'll put that up, no good. The crossover up at the top was nice. A little hesitation step. Just gotta be able to finish when you're driving into the paint. Dunham circles back outside the wing, guarded by Ellis. She'll get some space from her defender all the way near the midcourt line. Shot clock nearing 10. Shot from Lorelei Roper, unsuccessful. Roper recognizing that that one may not have been the best look. Looking to the bench and signifying, yeah, that's on me. Janae Terry looking towards coach Katie Gerald for some instruction. Abby Ellis gonna take it and set up this offense. Analytics back the idea of making it one last shot, not allowing your opponent the chance to score. Five seconds left in this first half. Abby Ellis driving in, pass out to Terry in the corner. <laughs> Circles in. tournament appearances in her time. She was here, 41 points in a game. That's a Purdue record. 1,974 career points, uh, 238 career made threes. Speaking of made threes, right there. Harden, really fantastic from beyond the arc. Cass Harden, three for five tonight from outside the arc. Boilermakers love when she gets hot. She really adds to the confidence of this offense. She stretches the lead for the Boilermakers. Savannah Wheeler driving into the lane now, looking to pass it outside. Turnover, Cass Harden gets that one. Janae Terry will take over. Everyone knows Harden can uh, shoot, but did you know that she can play some hustle defense there? Ooh, Abby Ellis put one up from the corner, but it hit the top corner of the backboard. Didn't even get close to the net. You know, when you're shooting at that angle, you're always taught you want to hit the corner of the box, but maybe someone needs to specify that it's the smaller box. <laughs> Not the entire backboard. <laughs> Great observation, Charlie. <laughs> Dunham, working inside, passes that out to Cole Claw. Dunham taking it herself, puts it in with the right hook from outside the high post. Yeah, pretty little floater there from Terry. Uh, my apologies. Dunham. Dunham, yes, yes, thank you. Layden on the wing, driving inside, block shot by Kia Sivils. And the Marshall Thundering Herd coming out of the half with some defensive life, something that the Boilermakers led the way with in the first half. You can see right there, Layden tries to throw a floater up with that right hook, and Sivils just denies her. And perhaps a lapse in judgment there by the Boilermakers. Unable to count that out. It's going to be a five-second violation on the inbounds. Sivils, the top of the key. Quick pass to Dunham. Dunham near the baseline. Toss out to Lorelai Roper. That shot too strong. Sivils gets the rebound, resets the shot clock. Sivils did not get that rebound. Sivils took that rebound. Great hustle play there. Shot clock at 10. Lorelai Roper at the top of the key. Swatted away by Layden. Shot clock at three. The jumper. No good from Cole Claw. Rebound from Roper, put back unsuccessful. So three different chances out of possession there, Charlie, but the, the, the Thundering Herd just unable to capitalize. The Thundering Herd definitely wanting to get the, uh, the lid off of that basket, only shooting 35% from the field and 0 for 10 from beyond the arc. 
Layden from the high post. In and out of the rim. Boilermakers trying to end a two minute scoring drought here to start this second half. They still lead 35-28. But the Thundering Herd coming out with a new life and they could take control of this game at any moment it feels like. Rashe Akal the inbound at the baseline. Yeah, the, the Boilers really great from beyond the arc in the first half. Abby Ellis lays in a beautiful bank shot. Cass Harden reversed the court and Abby Ellis just took it herself. Roper will keep it at the wing. Taking it herself, takes a mid jumper. Off the rim too strong. Layden thought about pulling up from three, decided against it, and Sibbles will get a reach call. Brianna Furby coming in for Savannah Wheeler, the leading scorer for the Thundering Herd with 16 points per game. You can see the frustration on Sibbles' face. She knew she caught a piece of it, but at the wrong moment. Rashea Kyle, unsuccessful off the backboard. It's gonna be a whistle there, and it's gonna be Rashea Kyle going to the free throw line. Kyle not yet attempted a free throw today, but on the season, yeah, she's been pretty good from the, uh, from, the, from the free throw line. I'd say pretty good is an understatement. She leads the team with 91% from the line. Usually you see tall players not be able to shoot their free throws, and uh, Rashea Kyle said, I'm not gonna let that stand as she sinks yet another. Boilermakers take a 10 point lead with six minutes left in this third quarter. Thundering Herd need to get a spark going on offense if they wanna keep in this game. Boilermakers fully capable of pulling away at any moment. We've seen them strong starts with their non-conference opponents, 3-0 before that loss to Dayton. go back to say one more time, 71 points per game. Th they can reach that at any moment once they hit their spark. And as you look here, you're gonna see what warranted the whistle there. Another turnover by Dunham. And that's gonna be an offensive foul. I believe that's gonna be an illegal screen. Called on hard. Cass Hart gets her first foul of the half. Team first. Dunham almost losing control of her dribble on the wing. Dangerously close to a carry there. Pass to Roper. Colclaw pass inside near the baseline. Dunham loses the ball. Turnover in favor of the Boilermakers, but a whistle blows. Foul on Brianna Furby of the Thundering Herd. So instead of taking the turnover and starting their possession, Janae Terry is going to inbound near the baseline for the Boilermakers. Just a little, little too aggressive down there on that uh, on the baseline. Cass Harden pass into the paint. Rashea Kyle going for the post up. And New crowd not happy with that whistle. Yeah, double dribble called there, and uh, Coach Geralds goes, whoa, not so fast, as they discuss over on the opposite sideline. Marshall, oh for their last five, three minute scoring drought. Haven't put points on the board since the final two minutes of the first half. Lorelai Roper tried to play quarterback there. Really nice pass inside, but a little too much mustard. And it's gonna be another turnover for the Herd. Cass Harden with a bad pass to Ellis at the top of the arc. Dunham gonna pass it into the lane. Easy layup for number 24, Colclaw. 
And this may be the spark that the, uh, the herd needs. Layden pulls up from three. No good, Rashea Kyle with the rebound. Bad pass to her teammate Janae Terry in the paint. This herd team, I know we've talked about how the Boilermakers average 71. They're averaging 80. And a lot of how they do that is by running the fast break. And I think that Marshall is needing to do that again. It's a little difficult with the Boilermaker defense being rather resistant, but definitely something they're looking to build on here in this second half. Savannah Wheeler now back at point for the Thundering Herd. This Marshall offense starting to speed up the tempo a little bit as a bank shot goes in for two from Colclaw. Kennedy Colclaw really efficient from the field, showing it there. Layden on the wing. Oh, and Rashea Kyle, total lapse of judgment there. Wheeler lays that in for two. A turnover for the Boilermakers. And the Marshall Thundering Herd on a 4-0 run here. They are putting the thunder and thundering herd as that bench is on their feet, ready to support their girls. Three of three on their last three hit field goal attempts. This Marshall defense getting a little more physical now. Dump off to Layden. Travel call. Thundering Herd are loving this right now. Kate, Coach Katie Gerald wants to step aside and quell this flame that's building over on the opposing sideline. We'll step aside with the Boilermakers having a four point lead. Jordan ones. We know she likes to, to have that swagger both on and off the court as we've seen, but that also makes me think of a, another announcer, Lisa Byington who does play-by-play -play for the Milwaukee Bucks. She always comes fresh with the shoe game, and I'd like to shout out Lisa Byington. Always looking her best. I gotta tell you, Coach Gerald's two games, two different pairs of Jordans. Woo, that's a nice set of shoes. <laughs> Abby Ellis calling one of her teammates to set the screen. Mide from three, too strong off the heel. Abby Ellis with the rebound. Whistle called. You know, Alex, if Hustle had a face, it would be the face of Abby Ellis. Really always finding a way to get involved. Brooke Moore checking in for the Boilermakers as Abby Ellis heads to the line for her first free throws of the night. She goes one for one. And just like that, a three minute and 13 second scoring drought ends for the Boilermakers. We we're just talking about the, the Thundering Herd kind of powering back, cutting that lead down to four before our, our break and the timeout on the court. But the, the Thundering Herd forced six turnovers in, in the course of two minutes, and that led to a 6 0 scoring run that put him back in this game. And we were talking about it earlier the Thundering Herd are, are, are just moments away from taking this game and controlling the outcome. This is a two possession game right now. Boilermakers clustered in the paint. Shot from Colclaw, no good. Off the front of the rim, Mide with the rebound. Hands up in the air, no foul called as Mide struggling to get her balance with that dribble. Brooke Moore, the sharpshooter now at the wing. Shot clock at five. Brooke Moore from deep, sinks it! My goodness, from another area code. Brooke Moore, finally on the score sheet today. Brooke Moore is a game changer for these Boilermakers. When she gets going, th there's no stopping this offense, and I think that might be the spark that the Boilers need to close out this third quarter and keep that lead heading into the fourth. CC Mays with the put back. Look at that offensive effort there by Mays, not only to grab the rebound, but to get aggressive inside and finish. Abby Ellis driving in the lane herself. She'll take the foul and head to the line. And the the foul called on Lorelei Roper. The Boilermakers really trying to, uh, to get more involved at the free throw line, only four attempts in the first half. This will set them even to that. 
Checking in for the front to return, number 23, Alexis Johnson. Ellis still perfect from the line. You can see the foul right there. Marshall getting physical inside the paint. Abby Ellis just too small to put that one up with a floater. Falls to the paint, but still gets the two out of it. And just like that, this is a nine point ball game. Colclaw puts that one up, but is fouled by her number buddy, Roshea Kyle. And Colclaw going to the line for attempts number eight and nine on the year, shooting 71%. Colclaw, the grad student from Crofton, Maryland. First on the team with three blocks. Colclaw is also a transfer, I believe, from Stenson University. It's another thing about Marshall. They've built a, quite the team with some transfers. They, they include Xavier, Stetson, Ole Miss, and Austin P. Brianna Furby being from Austin P and the hero who won the game against Moorhead State with a last second shot. Marshall foul, 24, Cole Claw. But to go back to what we were mentioning, Charlie, the transfer portal I think is one of the most valuable assets that can be used in college sports. I mean, it's basically a one-time free agency, free agency plea for these players and when these coaches can go out and, and just capitalize on getting these players that can improve their program when they have lapses in recruiting. When you're trying to rebuild a program such as Katie Gerald's going out and getting Abby Ellis from Cal Poly or, or getting Janae Terry from Illinois, it it's just really helps to solidify the base foundation of a program before you bring in those new, new recruits. Absolutely, and it's proven to be pretty efficient to build through the transfer portal. From three, Dunham. Excuse me, Furby sinks it. Brianna Furby. Really a pretty good three-point shooter. 33% from beyond the arc. Jayla Smith fights down the lane. Lays up a shot, no good. Thundering her with the rebound. Dunham moving quick. Pass to Colclaw. She's gonna put that one up. Rejected by the Boilermakers. Mide Oriami to inbound at the baseline. Starting to feel the tension here in Mackey Arena, Charlie, as both these teams getting a little more heated. They're picking up the pace inside the paint. This is a huge possession for the Boilermakers, who only lead by two possessions, up six right now. Mide, pass into Kyle. Pass to Mide, turnover, right into the hands of Dunham. Long pass to number 23, Alexis Johnson. She puts up the bank shot. And just like that, Alex, we have ourselves a four-point ball game with Boil just under 50 to go. Boilermakers lead 47-43. Another turnover by the Boilermakers. Fischl blows the, the ball dead, but Marshall will get possession. Foul called on Abby Ellis, her third of the half, team fourth. You know, Alex, this brings up a really interesting time here, 45 seconds. From the end here, 47 to 43, the Boilermakers lead. And right here, we are up, up four here in Mackey Arena. And the time frame has pretty much already passed for the herd to score. They would have figured they wanted to would have scored early. So that way the Boilermakers wouldn't have had the chance for a last shot. Madison Layden stole that pass away from Cole Claw. We want to let our audience know we're having a little bit of technical difficulties, so the score box and the clock are, are absent for the moment. 35.2 seconds left in the third, clock ticking down. Boilermakers lead 47 to 43 with Abby Ellis at the top of the arc. And 
20 seconds left on the shot clock as the clock ticks to about 20 seconds left. Jayla Smith passing to Kyle. She loses the ball, turnover. Dunham with a pass to Furby. Furby from deep gets it stuck on the glass between the rim. I've only seen that happen when you do a shoot around in high school. Yeah, that is a signature knockout play right there. And look at that, look at the effort with the mop. My goodness, we may have a front runner for MVP today. Thank you to the team managers of Purdue women's basketball. Just, that's an oddity that is just a hilarious moment that you didn't expect to see. 12 seconds remain in this third quarter. Dunham to inbound. Pass to 23, Johnson. Back to Dunham on the wing. Shot clock at five. Pulls up. Air ball at the buzzer. We head to the fourth quarter with a tight game. Who shot it out with a mop? Madison Layden at the top of the key for the Boilermakers. A reach in foul on Alexis Johnson. Harden to inbound. And just a little too much contact there. Gonna warrant the whistle. Cast Harden to Jayla Smith from the corner. Off the rim, no good. That one tipped by Jayla Smith. Still heard ball as CC Mays was supposed to be on the receiving end of it. But the 2020 Indiana Miss basketball tried to deny that one. I would say that's a reasonable assumption though, seeing that there were three seconds added to the clock. Dunham fighting hard against Jayla Smith, dumps it off to Furby. Colclaw taking it down the lane herself. No good. Boilermakers tried to save that ball, unable to get it back in. Gonna be a, uh, a throw in under the basket here for the Marshall Thundering Herd. The officials again talking. Possibly looking for, to see if Jayla Smith, her foot was out. I believe it was in. We're gonna rewind it a little bit, see. Maybe the ball was near the boiler maker. Oh, that one bounced into the E of boiler maker. So the Thundering Herd keep possession on that one. Dunham at the top of the key. Cole Claw fighting into the post, lays it up with the right hand. But a foul is called. Cassidy Harden be called for the foul. Cole Claw will head to the line for two. Cole Claw, two for two on the day so far. Has two very important free throws. Perfect. She'll take one more from the line before we resume action here. One for two. Jayla Smith. Brooke Moore at the top of the key. Fighting into the lane, almost loses control of her dribble. We'll dump that out to Jayla Smith on the opposite side of the court. Another whistle will be called. I believe that was on CC Mays, Alex. And a lot of physical defense here from the Marshall Thundering Herd, perhaps too physical. As we get late here in the game, possible stoppages are gonna hit more and more. Madison late, good for two. Dunham dumps off to Furby on the wing. Driving into the lane. Foul called on Madison Layden for the Boilermakers, her first, team second in the fourth quarter. Yeah, Madison Layden got caught hand checking on the back there. 
pretty much always going to warrant a whistle, especially when the official's standing directly behind you. Savannah Wheeler checking in for CC Mays. Those two are a dynamic duo. CC Mays and Savannah Wheeler combined for 37 points against Morehead State. Not seen tremendous success from them. Savannah Wheeler with only six points tonight. CC Mays with four. The leading scorer is Cole Claw with 13 for the Thundering Hurt. You know, interestingly enough, Wheeler has six points and she also has six turnovers. Really something that the, uh, the Thundering Hurt can really clean up. Yeah, and if you look there, warrant the travel call and we're going in the other direction. Day setting a pick. Jayla Smith fighting in, dumps it with the right hook, gets her own rebound, puts it back for two. And to add the one to that, Alex. Brilliant opportunity for the and one created by Jayla Smith, driving into the inside, drawing the contact, and finishing at the rim. That's a great job of her to get her own rebound, like you just mentioned with finishing. We're gonna get a timeout on the floor. Unsuccessful, got her own rebound and got the put back and the foul call. She sinks that one. Only four points on the night, but she's been quite a factor here in this second half, being strong on the defensive end, as you can see, guarding number 10 Dunham quite intently. And there's a steal for Jayla Smith. Fighting hard, gonna reset. Uh, another turnover right back for the herd. Jayla Smith tried to turn around and set up the offense, but Furby right behind her to catch that one. Furby's gonna hit the dirt. Foul called on Mide Oriami. Wow. That was an interesting turn of events, Charlie. We saw, we saw Jayla Smith with a great defensive effort, got the steal. Gets all the way down, drives in, tries to circle back near the wing and then loses it to Furby. Now the Marshall Thundering Herd have a chance. Good for two with the left hook is Cole Claw. And really good effort in the post from Cole Claw. And uh, the Herd are, are almost to 50 points. The last time the Boilermakers held an opponent under 50, Ohio State 2019. Thundering Herd leading 26 to 14 and points in the paint. Doing a great job of occupying that low post space. Jayla Smith to shoot two after being fouled by Cole Claw there. You saw. Smith one for one after that last foul. Make it two for two, nothing but net. Janae Terry and Rashea Kyle set to sub in for the Boilermakers once Jayla Smith is finished here at the line and she will do so a perfect four for four, excuse me, three for three. So Jayla Smith and I believe Mide Oriami check out and the starters come back in for what you think could be the final seven minutes. I, I imagine they'll play the rest of the game. Being as close as it is with the Thundering Herd, fighting back, not giving up anything. They're, they're surrendering a, a couple points, sure, but they are not quitting. They're not out of this game just yet. Eight points can seem like a lot at times, but it can also seem like nothing at all. Furby in and out of the iron. It all depends on how the shots are falling, Alex. And the shots aren't falling often here today. And the herd looking, hopefully, to get something going for themselves with a substitution. Ariana Redman checking in for the herd, number 30. The senior guard from Smyrna, Tennessee. Hope I pronounced that correctly. Madison Layden dumps it out to Terry. Brooke Morris got an open look if she wants it. She does not. 
Pass into Kyle. Off the rim, no good. Rashea Kyle had a career performance with 20 points against Dayton. Swats that away is Kyle. Yeah, they're gonna say she caught a little bit of the arm there. Not all ball. And it's gonna be the hurt going to the free throw line. Beautiful effort from Kyle, but just a little too physical. Didn't set her feet in time. Savannah Wheeler, an 87% shooter from the line. She'll knock down her first. She's five for five tonight from the line. Make it six for six. Pass Harden on the wing. Pass into Rashea Kyle. She'll dump that off to Terry. Terry gonna put that one up off the glass and in. Everyone knows that Terry can shoot from outside, but showing she can put the post up too. Furby fighting downtown. And among the trees in the paint, somehow able to get that one off was Furby. Brooke Moore. Another pass into Kyle. Dumps that out to Cass Harden on the wing. Off the hands of Rashea Kyle. Marshall foul 34, Lorelai Roper. She got her hands on that one. Push Kyle from the back. And it's gonna be Purdue's highest free throw percentage shooter, Rashea Kyle, at the line. And Coach Gerald's over there trying to advise how to close this game out, closing out something the Boilermakers struggled with against Dayton. They extend their lead to eight with five and change left to play in this game. Kennedy Colclaw checking back in for the Thundering Herd. She'll take the place of Ariana Redman. Janae Terry flips the court to Brooke Moore in the corner. Pass back to Terry. She'll take a jumper. Nothing but net. Yeah, way to hit that shot. Almost a floater on the uh, short corner. Really that ball seemed to sail for minutes. Savannah Wheeler dumps it out to Furby. Roper near the elbow looking to pass. Furby with the jumper off the front of the rim, no good. Brooke Moore with some fancy dribbling. Cass Harden from the corner. Off the rim, but a foul called. And this game is really starting to get away from the herd. They've got to put it together quickly. As they're, uh, they're now down 10, Alex. Boilermakers in the bonus. Cass Harden being physical with Savannah Wheeler at the top of the key. She'll take a jumper, sinks that one, rim it in. And just like that, Wheeler's in double digits for scoring. Two players for the Thundering Herd in double digits. Rashea Kyle tacks on two more to her stat sheet. That's now 15 points. She leads the Boilermakers. Steal by Furby. Easy two for the Thundering Herd. Lead cut to eight.
Boilermakers three of their last three. So they take an eight point lead with three minutes and 30 seconds left. Madison Layden looking for an open woman. Terry on the wing. Lob pass into Kyle, back to Terry. Terry with the floater, no good. Rebound by Colclaw. And Terry's been hot from that short corner, but the short corner is a difficult spot to shoot from. No backboard to use. Tony Kemper giving some advice to his team. Savannah Wheeler from the wing. She'll take a shot, sinks it down, but a whistle called. That's gonna be an offensive foul. I believe they're gonna call that as a push off on Wheeler there. I don't know about you, Alex. I certainly didn't see it. Not on Wheeler. Oh, uh, yes, that, it's a screen it was by Lorelei Roper. Roper. Caught the push off from Abby Ellis. A beautiful shot from Wheeler, but you can see right there the contact made. That makes five for Lorelai Roper. She'll take a seat. Cole Claw in foul trouble with four here in the final two minutes. Willemakers still lead by eight. Layden. Pass to Jayla Smith. Jump ball. It's gonna be Marshall Ball. CC Mays just stole that one out of the hands of Madison Layden. And that one was a tussle. She tried to pass that into, I believe, Rashea Kyle. And she just got a dirty piece of CC Mays. The last possession, definitely not what the herd needed. Can ill afford to not score. CC Mays fighting into the lane. Lays it in for two. That one took a little bit of a bounce off the iron, but it found its way home. CC Mays, what a pretty little floater going down the lane. Pass into the paint to Kyle. Back out to Layden. Layden from deep. Off the heel, too strong. CC Mays trying to make something happen on the fast break. She'll drive in near the baseline. Regroup. Furby from deep. Off the heel, too strong. CC Mays with the rebound, puts it up from the low post, no good. But she draws a foul, she'll head to the line. Really, really good sell on that by CC Mays. As you see, she goes in here, maybe a little bit of contact, but make sure to fall to get the call. <laughs> I'd say CC Mays has a career in acting after that one. That was a, a clear tumble down. Rashea Kyle barely caught the heel of CC Mays. Mays attempting her first from the line tonight. She'll go 0 for 1. Boilermakers still with the eight point lead, but Purdue on a scoring drought of the last two minutes. Less than two minutes to play here. Marshall running out of time to make some magic happen here in Mackey Arena. And it certainly does not help when CC Mays goes 0 for 2 from the line. And it also doesn't help when Mershea Kyle absolutely beasts up on that rebound. Really great grab out of the air. Abby Ellis dumps it off to Jayla Smith. Cass Harden in the corner. Reverse the court to Layden. Shot clock at five. Abby Ellis trying to make a move. She'll toss that one up. Layden from the outside, off the rim. Rebound by Jayla Smith, puts it up and draws the foul. And one on that one. What an exclamation point by the 10th Indiana Miss basketball in Purdue program history. It's plays like that, Charlie, that keep the Boilermakers in control. And if Jayla Smith can sink one, if not both of these, I think the Boilermakers have enough to pull away here with less than 90 seconds left to play. And with the conversion on the and one there, Marshall. Shot no good from Wheeler. 
Rebound by Cole Claw. Madison Layden called for the foul. Rashea Kyle in foul trouble. She'll be subbed in for Mide Oriyami. Cole Claw sinks that one, nothing but net. With a minute and 13 left, Cole Claw definitely needs to make this second one, followed by a, a quick stop by the Boiler, stopping the Boilermakers. Two for two. Draws it back within six. Foul on CC Mays. Got some contact on Madison Layden. And you see the frustration on CeCe's face. She knows that this is not the time for error. Yeah, and sometimes you have the intentional foul this late in the game, but uh, being down six is a little wide a margin. That puts CeCe Mays and Cole Claw in foul trouble, each of them with four. That one knocks in. One minute remaining. Boilermaker's gonna get out of here with a good win. A bounce back win off that loss to Dayton. That one spins off the rim. As they look ahead to number 22, West Virginia, and the next five games gonna be a grueling schedule for the Boilermakers. We're going into those next five. They gotta make sure that they finish this one off and committing fouls like that, not putting them in a great position. Cole Claw five for six tonight. Make it six for seven. This will be interesting. Only a one and one free throw opportunity here as Marshall's still only at nine fouls. Once they eclipse 10 is when it's an automatic two. The sophomore guard from Kokomo is 83 from the line this season. She knocks down both of those. Boilermakers lead by seven with 48 seconds left. Those were two very key free throws just made. Dump out to Wheeler. Wheeler dancing on the top. She'll take it down Main Street, loses the ball. And the Boilermakers will get possession of that one. Pass to Brooke Moore. Off the hands of Furby. Furby frustrated. She thought that was off the hands of Brooke Moore. But the Boilermakers retain possession with 31 seconds left on the clock. Boy, from here, that sure looked like it was off the hands of Moore. Pass to Harden. Foul from Savannah Wheeler. One second ticks off the clock. But Cass Harden will head to the line. As a 50% free throw shooter, so if you're the thundering herd, Cass Harden is exactly who you want on the line right now. One of the lowest free throw percentages on the Boilermaker squad this season. That one off the rim and out. You know, Alex, talking about free throw percentages, is it a little surprising that in this time where you know there are going to be fouls and people go to the foul line, Kyle's not in the game? Well, Kyle's in foul to CC Mays to inbound for the Thundering Herd. She'll pass that to Dunham. Dunham driving down the lane, puts it up with the right hand, rebound by Smith. Just enough time for one possession. Abby Ellis keeping it away. Foul called on Dunham. Believe she reached in and swatted that ball away. Ellis will head to the line. Ava Learn now coming in 
for Madison Layden, the freshman from Hyde Park, New York. You know, Alex, I understand the late game fouls when it's close, but there's only 19 seconds left and you're, you were losing by eight. Not really understanding the choice there. With 19 ticks of the clock, the Boilermakers, after a rough shooting out in the first half, reached their points per game of 70. And as we click down to the final seconds, the Boilermaker's gonna get out of here with a 10-point victory, 70 to 70. 